Hello and welcome. In this educational aid, we're going to talk the basics of the electromagnetic spectrum or EM spectrum. Specifically, its makeup, space application, frequency, and wavelength. So what is the electromagnetic spectrum? Most simply, it is light and it describes the total range of light that exists. In many communities, the spectrum is often referred to as energy or radiation and is described in terms of energy, wavelength, or frequency. Whether you refer to the EM spectrum as light, energy, or radiation, each is correct, and throughout this video, we refer to each interchangeably. There are many types of light besides what we can see, such as infrared and gamma rays. The primary source of light is emitted or radiated from the sun and stars. However, we can produce radiation ourselves, such as when we go to the doctor and have an x-ray taken, or even by turning on a light bulb. Light travels at a constant rate, roughly 300 millimeters per second when in a vacuum, or the speed of light. Light is made up of two parts, electric fields and magnetic fields, thus the electromagnetic spectrum. All objects above zero degrees Kelvin emit radiation. However, the amount of radiation emitted is a function of both temperature and wavelength. Our sun emits radiation across the whole EM spectrum. Most of the light given off by the sun we cannot see. However, we use sensors on satellites which measure and record the various light emissions from the sun or other objects such as the heat from a jet engine. Scientists then will typically add a color code to the image to depict the various temperature ranges represented. Typically, red will represent the higher temperatures and blue the lower temperatures. Now, to better understand the EM spectrum, let's break it down in terms of wavelength and frequency. What is wavelength and frequency? Let's look at the ocean to better illustrate these terms. Disturbances on the surface and under the water create swells or waves. The distance from the top of one wave to the top of the next is called wavelength. Then the rate at which waves pass the same point in the given time is called frequency. Now, let's relate frequency and wavelength back to the EM spectrum. The EM spectrum is made up of a bunch of waves, all traveling at the speed of light but some parts of the waves are more closely spaced and other parts are spaced further apart. So, just like the ocean example, the further the wave spacing are larger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. The more closely the spacing of the waves are smaller the wavelength, the larger the frequency. We will go in more detail on frequency and wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum laws educational aid. But for now, we just need to know that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So the larger the wave's wavelength, the smaller its frequency. The larger the wave's frequency, the smaller its wavelength. These differences in frequency and wavelength break up the EM spectrum into portions or subregions. The portions that divide the EM spectrum are as follows. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. Now, let's talk about each of these subranges in terms of wavelength and frequency and their general space application. Radio waves have the largest wavelength ranging from 10 kilometers to 10 centimeters. That's the size of a large building to a baseball. It has frequencies ranging from 3 kilohertz to 300 megahertz. Radio waves are widely used to transmit information across distances in radio communication systems, such as radio broadcasting, television, two-way radios, mobile phones, communication satellites, and wireless networking. Microwave wavelengths range from 10 centimeters to one millimeter, the size of a baseball to head of a pen, with frequencies from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Microwaves are the main wavelengths used in radar, but also are used for satellite communications and wireless networking technologies such as Wi-Fi, although at these power levels they are unable to cause thermal heating. Infrared wavelengths range from one millimeter to one micron, 
so about the size of a period on a piece of paper, to cells. Its frequency ranged from 300 gigahertz to 300 tetrahertz. Infrared waves are used to detect thermal radiation. Because of the size of the infrared wavelength, they can pass through clouds, gas, and dust. This makes infrared useful for meteorology, geology, and astronomy. Visible light wavelengths range from about half micron, about the size of cells, and has a frequency of 300 tetrahertz. Visible light is a part of the EM spectrum the human eye is the most sensitive to. This wavelength is typically used for remote sensing, agricultural, and astronomy. Ultraviolet wavelengths are about 10 nanometers, so about the size of a virus. And from this point on, the size of the frequency starts getting so large, it is simplest to only refer to wavelengths. Since the Earth's atmosphere absorbs much of the high energy UV radiation, scientists and astronomers use this information gathered by sensors on satellites orbiting the Earth to observe UV radiation coming from the Sun and other celestial bodies. X-ray wavelengths are about 0.1 nanometers, about the size of DNA. Scientists and astronomers use X-ray sensors on satellites to collect information concerning the sun. As stated earlier, the sun produces light in all the subregions, but the sun's corona radiates primarily in the X-ray subregion. This information allows tracking of sunspots and allows astronomers to determine solar flux of the sun. Gamma ray wavelengths are about 10 picometers, about the size of an atom. Gamma rays have the smallest wavelength and the most energy of any subregion in the EM spectrum. They are produced by the hottest and most energetic objects in the universe, such as neutron stars and pulsars, supernova explosions, and regions around black holes. Scientists also use gamma rays to determine elements on other planets. However, effectively using these subregions of the electromagnetic spectrum does have its limitations. One of these limitations is atmospheric absorption. All materials do one of three things to electromagnetic energy. Depending upon the wavelength of the energy, it either absorbs the energy, reflects the energy, or the energy passes through the material. Therefore, atmospheric absorption is the Earth's atmosphere absorbing the radiation being emitted. In some cases, this is a very good thing. Many of the harmful energies emitted by the sun is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, thereby protecting us here on Earth. But using the full electromagnetic spectrum for space applications, the Earth's atmosphere can become problematic. The different layers of the Earth's atmosphere, clouds, and rain can affect or absorb some portions of the EM spectrum. This picture provided by NASA shows the various subregions of the EM spectrum and the absorption of the spectrum being emitted. In the middle of this picture details the absorption of the EM spectrum. The gray areas show the areas the spectrum is absorbed or partially absorbed. The areas without the gray are our transmission windows. So, now we have the EM spectrum broken down to subregions and by frequency and wavelength. But why is this important? All objects that are above zero degrees Kelvin emit energy. When EM radiation strikes an object, energy is either transmitted, it goes through the object, is reflected by the object, bounces off, or is absorbed, adds additional energy to the object. Knowing the frequency of the emitted EM spectrum of the object allows us to determine the type of sensor required to image the object. Knowing the wavelength allows us to know through what medium or mediums the energy will transmit through or be absorbed. In the EM Payload Educational Aid, we will discuss this frequency and wavelength relationship in more detail. But for now, this educational aid gives us a basic understanding of the EM spectrum. This table gives a good summary of the size, wavelength, frequencies, and space application of the EM spectrum and its subregions. That is it for the basics of the electromagnetic spectrum. I am Jeremy Brown with the National Security Space Institute. I hope you enjoyed this educational aid.